Hello and welcome back to the Gavilan Hills Vineyard here at Paradise Ranch, where today we're going to be talking about the Sulcata tortoises, Simon and Garfunkel. We've been doing this short series. If you haven't seen part one and part two, by all means, take a look at those. But today's discussion will be about diet. And as you can see, Simon is visiting me here. He always has to come up and bug me while we're trying to get things done. We're going to be talking about their diet. And if you are going to take care of these big boys like this, you're going to need to really make sure that they have a balanced diet. And that's probably the most important aspects of taking care of these guys besides having a good and good enclosure. So let's talk about the diet for these uh, beautiful boys. Today, today it's it's about uh, it's about 75 degrees. It's the first week of December. Uh, the boys are very active today, walking all over the place, trying to keep themselves nice and warm. So it's very nice living in this dry climate, this warm climate, where the first week of December we've got 75 degrees all week, and Simon can really get into that, huh, buddy? Huh, buddy? He's just all over the place today. Sulcatas are very voracious eaters. Some sulcata tortoise owners refer to their big boys as eating machines. These guys, these guys can graze all day, hours, and just eat up a ton of food. So we're gonna talk about their diet specifically and what you need to do to make sure you keep these big boys healthy. All right, Simon, tell them what you need for you. Tell them what you need to eat. 75 to 80 percent of their diet is grass. They'll graze most of the day in the area and this is the bulk of their diet. Sometimes it could be up to 90 percent of the diet. It doesn't have a lot of nutrition that's why they need to eat a ton of this grass. As they're doing this um, they could eat other things as well. Um, hey I provide them Timothy hay you can provide them other things like um, I think there's meadow grass and okay, but really need to make sure that the grass they're eating is pesticide and herbicide free. It's important, I'm pretty sure that's why Simon was sick for a couple months was because I think he got some of the grass on the other side that I think was overspray when I was putting in some weed killers. I'm pretty sure that's why he wasn't doing well. This grass over here, I don't do anything with it. It's just natural grass and they eat tons of that. As I said, we need to provide a balanced diet for these guys. So grass is 80, 75, 80%. You can also provide them with some other things that are really good for them. And let me see, we could do things like collard greens, kale, romaine, um, carrots, squash, pumpkins, broccoli, Corn of the cob is real interesting. Corn of the cob, they really like eating that corn off the cob. And I'm not sure, sure why, but Simon here, <laughs> Simon really likes corn of the cob. Um, there's other things that you can get at the store, and I always carry a list because it's so funny when you go to the store. I mean, some of this stuff you would never, you would never even know you could find it at the store. <laughs> you gonna come by? Things like um, radicchio or uh, endive, arugula, things like that, um, mustard greens. But all of this stuff can be, should be about 10, 10 to 15% of their overall diet. So if you make this stuff, it makes it interesting for them because when I bring it out, I typically feed them two or three times a week. In the winter, I do a little bit more only because the grass isn't as good. And you'll notice they get a bit excited and they'll come running towards you when they see that you're putting some of this food out. One of the things I did was a couple years ago I built a um, raised garden and in that raised garden I do grow um, kale and greens and carrots all the kind of stuff that they would need. I'm adding a second one now because by adding in Garfunkel I'm really going to need a lot more of that stuff in the summer so I really don't want to have to pay for this stuff at the store. A good example, I, don't, I feed them bell peppers once in a while. 
they do like them. It's not really something you should feed it very much of, but bell peppers used to be 39 cents, 35, 39 cents. They're now 99 cents a piece. So it's a lot better if I don't have to pay for all this stuff. You're just gonna keep walking by, aren't you? Don't hit my camera though. Don't bother my camera over there. So they, the, all the greens and the vegetables should be 10 to 15% of their diet. Now you could give them special treats, I call them. Provide a special treat to the turtle that I do maybe once a month. Um, things like watermelons, strawberries, peaches, cantaloupe. But this stuff has a really high sugar content. And sugar, these boys just don't do well with that. And you'll notice their poop is a lot different if you feed them too much of that stuff. They just have a real problem digesting high sugar content. But they, as a treat, it's just like anything else. You don't want to, you don't want to feed your kids ice cream every single night or a ton of ice cream. So it's the same kind of concept with that. A lot of Sulcata tortoise caregivers will provide supplements to their tortoises. Since I have a lot of grass, it may not be as important, but I do try to provide them supplements. For example, Missouri is the one that's got a good, um, for a good price on supplements. The biggest problem with Missouri and these supplements is it's very difficult to feed these guys. When I give them their special treats a couple times a week, what I'll do is, is I'll mix that in with, let's say, romaine, and I'll put them on top of the romaine lettuce. But they'll eat the romaine lettuce before they'll eat the Missouri, and lots of times I can see that the Missouri's still in their little feeding area, and I kind of keep mixing it up. And it takes me two or three days, but I'll get them to eat those supplements. So I provide them supplements as I can every, every week or so. Um, the other thing is you need to make sure that when you have these feeding areas, I'm gonna call them, you keep it in the same place. Feed them in the same location all the time and the turtles will know to come out and look at that or follow you over there all the time to um, see what food's there. But that feeding area, that little feeding trough needs to be not on dirt. Don't put them on dirt, don't put them on rocks. They will eat the dirt and it gets tough within their digestive system. So try to give them a clean surface. You could use a tray, um, the base of a planter um, box with those little planter bases. Those are good for, for planting. I just kind of put mine in the corner on the grass with a, I have a stepping stone underneath them. And I kind of use that as the one, but they know that if I'm walking in that area, they know to come over and follow me here. One of the most important things to have with these guys also is a water dish. You need a water dish that's located within their enclosure that gives them access to fresh water. Now the water dish needs to have some low sides on it, preferably not anything that would be higher than the bridge, because once they get in, sometimes they cannot get out. And I, I use plastic pan or planter bases, they're pretty big, they're about 24 inches. And I put them in the middle of their enclosure. I change out the water every two to three, four days, but the water is sort of replenished every day when the sprinklers come on. So when the sprinklers come on, it actually adds some fresh water to their water dish. There are tons of plants, especially in an area like I am. I'm in a rural area. There's tons of plants all over my yard. I've got everything from roses, to lantana, to uh, geraniums, grapevines, um, palm trees, even a bunch of brush around on the outside. How do I know if any of these plants are any good for my app, for my tortoises? So I want to talk about two apps. These two apps are, in my opinion, a required tool to, to work with these tortoises. The first one, and I'm gonna kind of walk through my notes on this. The first one, the, the plant app, the plant identifier app that I, that I use. You can get this off of the Play Store, Google, or uh, Apple. And it's actually called the plant app, the plant identifier. The app will identify plants, and you can also store the plants if you want in the, in the little app to keep them as like a database of plants that you may have around your property. Once you've downloaded the app, 
you can use your tablet or your phone. Um, you take a picture of the plant. Take a picture of the specific plant. And the app will search the database for that um, plant. Now, most of the time, 90%, 99% of the time with me, it's, it's correct in picking out the right app. Once the, once the plant's been identified, we'll display a picture of the app, as you can see here. Now remember this, this is, um, the first one I'm showing here is a geranium. And then I'll show you here real quick, I'll, another search, and this other search came up with something called lantana. So in my property, I've got a bunch of lantana and a bunch of geraniums. Are these good to feed to the tortoises? Are they good diet, something to provide in my balanced diet? How do I know? Well, let's look at the next app. Now this second app is probably the most important app that anybody should have. If you're a tortoise owner, you need to have this app. It's called the tortoise, ta the tortoise table, excuse me, the tortoise table. And it lists probably every plant there is out there and tells you whether that plant is good, bad, or ugly, that's what it put it, for your tortoise. So the app is called TTT, if you look it up on Google or the Apple Store. Here comes Simon again. Um, the app will determine if the plant is something that should be fed to your tortoise. It's very simple. So the app, the app, the app does not have a search feature, which kind of irritates me, but it lists everything in alphabetical order. And if you look at it closely, you'll see that there are three different icons in the app. One is a green check mark, which means it's okay for your, or safe for the tortoise. The second one is an orange triangle, which is telling you, use this in moderation. It's not something you want to feed to them every day, but it's something to feed to them in moderation. And the last one is a red check mark, or a red um, X. And that red X means do not feed to your tortoise. So it's fairly simple when you look at it from that standpoint. Hey, Tony. Hey, Simon. What's going on? Notice the, the first one on this original one. It says uh, there's ice plant. Ice plant is, uh, has, a, has a green check next to it. It's a succulent cactus type of thing. And there's lots of ice plant around. Not even, I don't have any in my house, but my neighbor down the street has some that I clip off all the time to bring over. And it explains to you at the bottom why certain plants are good for the tortoises. If you also look on this screen, look on this screen and you'll notice iris. Now an iris is a beautiful plant. It's a really nice looking plant, but notice it has a red X next to it. And if we go to the next screen, it'll give go into pretty good detail on why an iris is not something you want to feed to your tortoise. So looking at another example, now remember the two plants that I did a search on here in my property, Lantana and geranium. So let's look at Lantana. So we'll just scroll down until we get to Lantana, and Lantana has a red X on it, which never, it never uh, dawned on me that Lantana was going to be something that's bad for the tortoises. The other example is geranium. Now geraniums I have all over the place, and I have uh, um, several species of geranium. Geraniums are one, they keep away the gophers, and two, they're not bad looking colored plants that provide flowers all year round. And the geranium has a green check next to it. If you look into more detail, you'll see why they're good for um, tortoises. Simon's, Simon's making all kinds of noise today. So let's review real quick. The plant app is a really good app to help identify plants that may or may not be good for your tortoise. But then you use the turtle, the tortoise table. The tortoise table allows you to identify whether the plants you're looking at, the plants in your yard are actually safe for your tortoise. These are um, mandatory, in my opinion, for anybody who has tortoises. There's also a um, website, and I'll put a link below. The tortoise table has a really good website that has a ton of information on it. And when you read about them, it's a group of tortoise enthusiasts in UK that put together this website and the app, and I'm really impressed with it. You can make donations to them as well if you'd like, which I did because this thing is just a great resource for anyone who has tortoises. 
There are a few other things that I use on a regular basis. There's um, several different, let's call them reference guides, single page reference guides. And I actually even put um, a couple of these I've had laminated. And I give them out to some of the new owners that I know that have tortoises or ones that um, when I get a tortoise that, that I've rescued and it's going to a new home, I'll provide the laminated reference guide. And you'll see there's quite a few different ones. And I got a list in the description below so you can take a look at those. And the last thing are books. On Amazon, obviously, there's several books that you can read up on tortoises and they talk about enclosures and different things like that plus their diet you coming over to talk hmm? come over to say hi when you're raising tortoises and you're caring for tortoises the their diet is the most important thing beyond the enclosure ensure that you provide a balanced diet lots of grass and hay and keep these guys healthy. You keep them healthy and they're gonna last a long time. And he's always in a good mood when I come out because he thinks he's gonna get some extra food. So if you have any questions, let me know. Any comments, put them below. Um, love having you back and talking to us. Uh, no, I don't have anything in my hand, so you can't, don't try to bite my fingers. <laughs> So this is Jeff from the Gavilan Hills Vineyard here at Paradise Ranch, taking care of our big boys. Please follow along, hit, hit the uh, like button down below, love to have you join us. This is Jeff, until next time, we're out.